Financial Planning has a team of skilled professionals ready to assist you with all of your self-managed superannuation fund requirements. Call TFS Financial Planning on 4046 5555. Oh, this is uh, interesting. Next name up on my screen is that of the Shadow Minister for, uh, well, the Environment. What's it called these days? Sustainability. Anyway, the uh, Shadow Environment Minister, Greg Hunt's uh, name is up on screen. Now, you may remember yesterday we had uh, uh, several calls on this issue of the dugong that's been washed up on uh, Trinity Beach. Also had a call from uh, Viv who said she just heard from someone out on Green Island that uh, they just speared a dugong and hauled it up in, uh, on the beach to uh, finish it off, to slaughter it in front of uh, a big crowd of visiting uh, Japanese or visiting Asian uh, tourists. Once again, just an outrageous act in front of our uh, visitors from the other side of the world, who probably just a few minutes before had been swimming, you know, in, in wonderment in this natural wonderland. And to see this slaughter, it's just outrageous that it goes on, but it does. So I'm presuming, I'm presuming Greg Hunt has called in about uh, some of these issues, but I don't know that. Hello, Greg. G'day, how are you going? I'm not sure why you have called in, but I'm glad you have. Uh, look, it's in relation to the, uh, the dugong um, on Trinity Beach, and I hadn't heard about uh, the additional one. Uh, and I have thought about this long and hard and come to the conclusion that it is time to take it to the new level because what we're seeing is systemic poaching uh, in breach of the law uh, for sale of turtle and dugong meat, which is doubly in breach of the law, and it is time to make a reference to the Crime and Misconduct Commission of Queensland, which deals with the issue of proceeds of crime. It's a systemic practice. It needs to be treated as a form of systemic crime. Uh, and uh, Warren Ench and I will be writing to the Queensland Government to seek the intervention of the Crime and Misconduct Misconduct com uh, Commission. It is time to have a serious investigation. Let's deal with what is a criminal activity being done in a systemic criminal practice. Greg, the state so-called sustainability minister says it's all a myth. She's got state members up here who are in denial. They say, no, 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 this is all made up. Uh, it's yeah. not made up. Uh, there are numerous reports. Uh, we see almost weekly uh, a new development. Uh, you know it. Uh, most of your, your listeners are deeply engaged in this issue. Um, there's a real problem. There's a national focus. People like Bob Irwin and, uh, uh, and, uh, and, and Colin Riddell and others have taken it to a national level. Uh, and it is a national disgrace that there is a systemic criminal practice in slaughtering, uh, poaching dugongs and then in resale of the meat. And we need to fess up and face the fact that uh, there is something in our own backyard uh, which is not about uh, traditional hunting. The traditional owners uh, have been very upfront to say, we need help. Um, there are people on our patch misusing our good name uh, and uh, we'll be approaching the Crime and Misconduct Commission. Greg, on this program yesterday, Colin Riddell pointed out there this is becoming now, to a certain extent, an international issue, and I think that put, that's where it needed to go as well, because quite clearly there's a, an aspect of, of uh, uh, hip hypocrisy, if you like, in where the Australian government stands on this, with its strong uh, uh, stand against the Japanese whalers, for example. Do you welcome that international spotlight on this issue? I don't think we should be afraid of it. I think... Uh it helps us to uh, address a real and significant uh, systemic criminal practice in our own backyard. And so uh, we've got to stand up internationally on whaling. We've got to be able to withstand international scrutiny uh, on any systemic criminal practice in relation to um, dugong poaching and the, uh, the illegal sale of uh, illegally gained dugong meat. Mm. And, um, so we need to deal with it straight to the Crime and Misconduct Commission, and I think it's time that we acknowledge that uh, this is a festering sore. You and I haven't spoken on this issue either since the RSPCA stepped into the ring on this, and I must admit I did welcome that, because one of the aspects that people on this program complain about from time to time is, is, that, uh, is the cruelty aspect of it. I, and some people say, I oh, know that's a side issue. It's all about, you know, the, the sustainability. It's all about uh, the, the, the future of the particular species. But some people are just aghast at the level of cruelty involved in the slaughter. 
I think that's right. I think that uh, it's not just an illegal poaching, it's also an inhumane poaching, which diminishes us uh, if we are involved in a slow, painful slaughter of animals which uh, are developed, which have enormous uh, sensitivity mm. and which everybody who has seen up close describes as capable of suffering great pain. Uh, we've just got to deal with it head on. And uh, this point about hypocrisy of taking one position internationally and turning a blind eye domestically is true. Uh, and in the end, that's what um, caused me, you know, about 18 months ago to become deeply engaged in the issue because mm -hmm. I just thought we can't argue on Wales internationally and turn a blind eye on dugongs domestically. Yeah. Thanks, Greg. Good to hear from you. Okay. He's the Shadow Minister for Well Sustainability, it's called these days. It uh, used to be the environment. Greg Hunt, the time is on uh, 29 past 10. There's a little update there. Where is it? Page 9 of today's post under the heading Calls Grow for More Dugong Protection. It says here the crocodile hunter's father has called for greater protection of dugongs as the federal government trains traditional owners to assist in the battle against illegal hunters, hectares of seagrass, has been uh, destroyed, it says Bob Irwin said. The damage showed how vulnerable the animals were to extinction. This is what he had to say yesterday. This is why I called for a temporary moratorium on the hunting of dugongs. It just reinforces, he said, the fact that if we don't get our act together, we're going to lose them. So uh, he puts it in a very stark language, it does, uh, as they call him, the crocodile hunters. Fun. More engaged with what they hear on their favourite yeah, radio station that? than they are with other media content. Yeah, to do see do how it can work for your brand, go to commercialradio.com.au. People listen to radio advertising. Roger that. Oh, the beeps, hang on. <laughs> Uh, who have we got on the line over here? Oh, we've got Colin back on the line. Hello, Colin. Hello, John. How are you, mate? I, I just talked to Greg Hunt. I suppose you heard it, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Uh, I've spoken to Greg this morning. My phone's been well, knocked down, and so is the uh, the internet. Um, I posted that story from the Cairns Post online. I also spoke to Bob last night, and Bob did that interview. He also, you know, I, I hope that the mistress, minister, uh, all the media people are listening now, because they monitor all the stations, and so does um, Parachute Pit and the rest of these local dodos. I want them to really know what's coming out of uh, you know, I told you yesterday there's um, a lot of international pressure. Well, Bob got an interview yesterday done on Canadian um, radio. He also did one in New Zealand, all on this dugong and turtle and the cassowary issue. Mm. People are aware of what's happening now in Australia. I've also been contacted this morning by the uh, Selkie Society from Florida. Now, Peter Beth here, and everyone knows he was the captain of the Sea Shepherd and who jumped on board, and they were going to jail him for life. Well, he started his own group now called Earth Race Conservation Society. Um, he's broken away from Sea Shepherd. He's got his own thing going now. Now, they're coming here in April to help us out, and also the Sulky Society... Um, so, how do, what's this word, Sulky? Sulky. Sulky. S-E-L... AIE, okay. they're in Florida. Mm -hmm. Now they conduct workshops on manatees. The manatee is uh, like a relative to the, to the dugong. Yeah. The, the overseas people are relating to our problem because mm -hmm. um, they don't recognise as a dugong, they recognise as a manatee. Mm -hmm. Now, um, Peter Bethune and, and um, Oriana Kalama, who heads up 30,000 people in Hawaii, just swam with those creatures in the Crystal River in Florida and conducted a workshop on them. Now, those people now are so passionate about these, these animals, they just photographed with them professionally and, and they're posting on all their sites. They've taken this up with a passion and, and uh, that's the pressure that's going to come out of them. Like they think you know, it's going to go away. What happened yesterday with the Japanese um, suspending their whale hunt? Uh, I put an appeal out this morning on every Facebook site, every major one, appealing for all those people now to turn their attention to Australia Turn your attention to the unmonitored, uncontrolled slaughtering of the turtles and yugongs. Mm. Like here's the last two days. There's, there's another poor baby, and that's hit everyone's heartstrings overseas, laying dead in the water out of Trinity, and you just got told that from Viv, and I know, I know of Viv, and she's a passionate supporter too, of another yugong getting slaughtered out there at Green Island. No, that was a, that was a turtle. A turtle, yeah. You know, they, they wait for them to come in. They're nesting, so they're easy prey, mate. And um, it's still happening around the coast, and that takes about 26 or 27 in the last um, year and a bit. Mm that are digested around here that we know of. So I really want these people, I hope they're listening because there's a lot, a lot of pressure going to come their way. 
and I just think, um, you know, Greg, for thinking up this new tax. And there's also another thing we've got to look at, too. These animals are inspected through aqueous as seafood, and they're not seafood, they're a mammal. Mm. They should be treated the same way as a cow or anything else. Yeah. What diseases are these animals bringing in if no one's checking the meat in the eskies that it is coming through? And I know it's still coming through. There's a current investigation underway. Mm. And, uh, you know, believe me, there's this process must be stopped, controlled, yeah. and tightly monitored. Otherwise, like you said, the Jewish Crown is just going to be the slaughtering grounds. Good to hear from you, Colin. That's Cole Riddell, who's been, uh, gee, nothing if uh, not energetic in uh, his pursuit of this issue. 26 minutes to 11. G'day, mate, how are you? Pretty good. It's, it, it's good to see the passion. That I'll, Cole doesn't give, give up, does he? Oh, he's amazing. But, but I was also really heartened by the fact that Greg Hunt, you know, he's, he's sitting there in his own private time, obviously lying in bed or whatever, thinking we're, we're, not, we're, not, we're not getting ahead fast enough, we've got to ch change tack. And now he's saying, look, there are aspects of this that need investigation by the CMC. Greg, Greg comes into my office when I'm in Canberra on a regular basis and you just walk past and you'll come into the web's office and you'll say, mate, we've got to find another way of dealing. We've got to find dealing. dealing. Mm. He rings me up this morning and he says to me, mate, I was having a long shower and I was thinking, why don't we do this? Mm. You know, so it, it's constantly on his mind. Mm. and that is, You know, that, that is fantastic. I mean, you've got Colin there that has taken this up as a single issue. He's got the most fantastic ally in Bob Irwin who, by the way, will be up here shortly. He's coming up to uh, as, uh, as the face of the uh, Toad Day Out to help with the cane toad stuff, and, of course, we'll be doing um, dugon and turtle and cassowary work while he's up here as well. And, I mean, he's built a, up a fabulous uh, friendship with, uh, with Colin, and, uh, you know, between the pair of them, they're an absolute formidable force. And as I said to him, you know, I get distracted on a whole range of other issues, you know, that we're dealing with at the moment. Mm. Um, but it's nice to know that you've got somebody sitting in the background that's beavering away. Mm. And uh, as I said to him, you know, we, we'll do whatever we can in our direction, but whenever he needs me, just steer me in the right direction and uh, turn me loose. So uh, it's great that we've got somebody there with that level of passion, and I've got no doubt at all at the end of the day, we are going to get an outcome. Bob Irwin has the energy of a young man. I mean, he's absolutely tireless. When he gets his teeth into an issue, when, when his, his conscience or whatever is, is somehow or other stimulated in one direction, when he feels he's got to fight for an issue, he's absolutely tireless and totally focused. And look, look he'll, call, he'll call over hot rocks to do mm. it. You know, he just won't give up. I talked to Judy, his wife, and uh, we all we all share concern. I often say to Cole, you know, how do we, we slow this bugger down? But I mean, it's part of his down. Mm. It's not, he won't give up. And once he commits himself to a cause, I mean, he's got his wombats in South Australia. He was on the phone to me as the cyclone was still blow, uh, uh, blowing, telling, uh, asking me about establishing a cassowary feeding foundation. Wow. Support the cassowaries. This is why. This is when I'm sort of bunkered down. In my yeah. <laughs> Wind blowing. And he's worried about. He's worried about the impact on the cassowary. Mm. And of course. Uh, the work that he's doing with Colin, I mean, has really helped to build up this national and international profile. Yeah. And, and the pair of them, they're like, they're, they're an odd pair of twins. <laughs> but, uh, they, they've become very, very dear friends, and uh, I think that's wonderful to see. And, uh, you know, that's the sort of relationships that will make a huge difference. And at the end of the day, I suggest to you that we're going to have kids saying thank you very much to Colin Riddell and... Uh, Bob Irwin, yeah. the efforts that they've done because in doing so that it's allowed them their, you know, and their kids to be yeah. able to still see these beautiful creatures. Well, Warren, very, very briefly, because I'm talking to Rob Fraser a bit later, just quickly the outcome of the meeting last night at Brothers.